What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be taking a look at 3ds Max 2024 and how to create a procedural basalt column generator. We're going to be using the array modifier, the new boolean operator, and using the data channel modifier as well to add some extra proceduralism on top. Let's check it out. All right, so the first things first, we're going to establish the base shape of the column itself. So let's make a cylinder, bring it down to about five sides to start with. And then we're going to put a spline down. That's going to be a shape for us to start working with to lay out our columns. OK, so we have this like kind of flowing river that it might be beside. We're going to go to our column generator, well, our column here and put a array modifier on there. We're going to select pick spline, and then we are going to take it off of count, put it onto relative offset, up this count, that way we have a better control over the density once we get moving there. And let's add another Y. Let's do, let's do three to start with, and scroll down here to randomization. Well, first scale, we're gonna put this to incremental and start raising the Z, drop this count down, there we go. And then let's start adding some randomization as well. All right, this will give us some of the base shape to get started here. Go ahead and offset this on the X, and we can always control the rotation a little bit more here in a minute, but this is just to give some offset from the spline initially. So now we need a way to be able to control the rotation of all of these columns without affecting their position, right? So we're gonna put down a volume select, that way we just have a selection of everything here. We're just gonna do it by object, replace, and after this, we're gonna put our data channel. And for here, we're going to do component space. And we're gonna set this to negative one and negative one. And you'll see why here in a minute. And after this, we're gonna do transform elements. And it's just gonna be the Z. We're not gonna point at a node. And this will control, you can see where those colors are changing. You'll see in a minute uh, that it will affect the rotation. So we're gonna do a vertex output and now when we control this Z, you can see that the rotation is changing as well. And that's what we wanted. So we have a seed here, close the rotation a little bit. And then after this, let's just do a turn to poly. So that's the first step of what we're gonna do. Add a little bit of shifting here. So we're just, instead of having this at 100 where it's really shifted, we can keep this at a lower value, giving it some more tilt. And we can do the same thing for the X, bring this down as well. So now if we mess with the seed, you can see that we have a little bit of variety in our shifting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a copy of this and we're going to go back down to the array. We're going to change how far this is offset right about there. And then now let's change the Z scale, shrink this down. Also got to change the incremental Z to that. But we have like more of this gradual kind of coastal area where the basalt is going to be uh, quite a bit shorter, giving us some more variety here. So already at this stage, let's do a normalized spline. That way we can keep a dynamic spacing on our spline. You can see that now we have a way to control the knots. So something like this is fine. And if we go back to our beginning stage, we can go ahead and move these points around. Got to change our array here really quick. We're going to do fill on both. So now as we make this spline longer, it's a, the columns are going to grow and they're gonna be evenly spaced out. You can see that we can really make something pretty dynamic. So we can start isolating the look a little bit better for what we're going for. I think we need a little bit of more randomization in the Z just to kind of change things up a little bit here. That's good, we'll do it on the smaller wall as well. Let's go down to our Z. Okay, and that's pretty good. We can maybe even use another Y count on here. It's not too bad. And then overall just push the scaling down even further, something kind of like that. Have a little bit more variety in here. And if we go to clay, probably preview this a little bit better. Also the height can dynamically change in here as well. Now we need a way to have this basalt column generator be on the other side of this river that's gonna be here. Um, and there's a few ways we can do that. One of the easiest ways is for us to simply just make a copy over here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the array of each one and we'll correct the offsets. So this is the other small section and then offset this as well. This is easiest. And then that way we can still tweak some of these settings. So we go back to our data channel. We go back to our transform elements. We can just pick some different seeds to change things up a little bit and they're not shared. And we can even adjust some of the height. And if we go back to our spline, everything should be working pretty well. 
And if we feel like the incremental increase in height is too strong, if we go back to our array and go down to scale incremental, we can just drop this down, put a little bit more variety in each as well. We take a look here at the bottom rows. They're a little bit too uniform. So if we go to our array and go down to random positioning, we can offset these a little bit to kind of overlap. And along with that, we can increase the scale a little bit as well. Go to our spacing and increase the density by dropping the spacing amount. So again, spacing drop down and shifting this position a little bit here. We're going to want to chamfer. You can already tell that the edges are reading more crisp. All right, now that we got these basalt columns set up, let's go ahead and get a feel for how the material is going to read um, and how the overall look is going. I like that, that's not too bad. All right, so once we have our procedural basalt column set up now, we need a way to have a procedural cliff that kind of goes along the side of it, right, to, to fill it in and make it feel more realistic. And there's a few ways we can go about this. Let's minimize this. So let's take our spline here and let's just go ahead and make a reference to this. And let's do an extrude. All right, so now that we have this, let's make sure we have more segments to work with. So let's just split this up a little bit. And we want a procedural way to edit the overall form of this, uh, but we can't use that at poly because as soon as the topology changes and new vertices are added, uh, it'll throw off the stack. So what we're going to use instead is an FFD modifier. Um, and that's just going to give us an overall shape that we can kind of work with here. Let's do F3 so we can see what we're doing. And we just want to kind of change these shapes around. Give something a little bit more dynamic before we throw a material that's going to displace on there. Yeah, it's okay if it feels a little bit round because once we have the material that's displacing, it'll feel a lot better. So now we can see that if we preview the end, um, everything's procedural. So like the amount of the extrusions and the segments, all of that will be fine. And using the FFD, um, make sure all of, the, all of the data is preserved the way it needs to be. Something we may want to consider here too is a way to remove any clipping uh, basalt that's hitting this wall. And a way we could do that is actually by using the shell modifier. That way we have some thickness on this wall. Let's do a uh, an inner amount, something kind of like that, just to uh, make this a solid piece. Go back down to this basalt row and we're going to do a volume select. And with that, we're going to do volume mesh object. We're going to pick this wall. And we're going to do object, let's do face. All right, so that's all the faces that it's intersecting with. And now if you have Wallworm installed, uh, you have another modifier and we'll do select faces and we'll do selected faces. We'll do by element. So this will expand the faces that it selects and then we can just delete those. Actually, we don't even need to use the select faces. We'll just do a delete faces and it'll be the same thing, selected faces element and it will delete those so anything that was clipping is now resolved and also it takes care of some extra geometry that we don't have to worry about anymore all right so let's go ahead and set up the displacements for this wall and since i don't want the displacing volume to delete any extra points and process and take longer what i'm going to do is i'm just going to clone this as a reference and now on this piece so let's hide our original so let's hide this bring this back in we're on there. Cool. And so above here, let's do our Boolean modifier. Do open VDB. So super dense, but that's fine because now we're going to displace this. Let's grab that map, bring it over here. Instance, and let's start cranking up the value. So luminance center, and let's start displacing. Let's also make sure it's a, let's just do cylinder for now, or even use existing mapping. Let's make a UV map really quick. We'll do a box. There we go. So we got that wall coming out a little bit there. And honestly, that's probably fine. And you'll see why the Boolean modifier is really cool. So we'll just copy this, put it after the displace. We lost a little bit and that's fine. And realistically, we didn't have to displace upward, um, but we're doing this kind of quick. So now we have a wall that is procedural along with it. Now it's really dense. So um, if you were wanting to make real-time edits, I would lower this and make it less dense. But if you were wanting to like push this out right away, it's like a you know a nanite setup or whatever for Unreal. Um, you're pretty much ready and good to go. So let's get the materials on there and do a quick test render, and then we'll be good to go. Oh yeah, and we need to put a, another uh, UV map on it after this bullet modifier. 
that clears the UVs. So let's just take the same UV we had from before, paste instanced. That way we know it's always going to line up with the displaced material. There we have it. Pretty unique procedural setup. Realistic wall, basalt columns that are uh, being dynamically called out if they're intersecting. Hopefully you guys learned a few things. It was some uh, really cool creative workflows on how to utilize different modifiers and the way you approach setting up different assets in your scene. It allows you to really experiment and iterate more creatively without having to redo work. So I hope you guys uh, found some value in this and uh, I would really appreciate it if you guys let me know what you want to learn next, what you liked and what you didn't like about the video. Um, that way we can continue to grow as a community and I can provide better value and really deliver the kind of content that, that you want to see and uh, watch and be a part of. Um, like I said in my previous video, I did just start a Patreon, super new. I, I do plan on trying to deliver more value in the sense of uh, maybe 3D assets or textures or uh, exclusive tutorials. That will give me a little bit more of a financial edge to really put some extra time and effort into a few things. Uh, that way you're always getting the highest quality content possible. So thanks for sticking around and checking out the tutorial and hopefully you had some fun and let me know what you want to see next. All right. See ya.